This video is a walkthrough of how to answer an exam question about the first half of the first A-level chemistry required practical in which students make a standard solution. Before I talk you through how to answer this question, pause the video and have a go at answering it yourself. Remember, this is going to be a six mark question, so you want to be spending about six minutes writing your answer. This question has come up at least twice in the seven exam series that we've had since the new A-level began, and it's come up both as a level response question and as a point per mark question. So what's the difference between those? Well, when you've got something that you know is going to be point per mark, you can really slim down the amount of detail that you're including because you know exactly which steps you need to include. Whereas when something is level marked, you really want to cram in as much additional detail as you can about the type of equipment you're using and why you're using things, because sometimes it can be hard to know exactly what's going to get you into the next band. So the fact that this question has come up as both of these types means that you definitely want to tend towards giving more information rather than less. It's probably obvious to you, but just in case you were unsure, a volumetric solution and a standard solution are the same thing. So your specification where it talks about this required practical says about making volumetric solutions, but actually the exam papers have called them standard solutions. They're not being consistent with themselves. And so the method is the same because they are the same thing. The other thing to note with this question is that they just say an accurately measured mass. They don't actually specify a particular concentration that you're trying to make, so you're not going to need to include a calculation in your answer to this question. But equally, in a future exam paper, they could specify that they want you to make up a 0.1 molar solution, and then you might need to do a calculation using the MR to work out what mass you would be measuring at. Since this question could be a point per mark question, I've put ticks down the side where you would get a mark if it was that type of question. But as we said, when this first came up in 2016, it was a level response question. So I've also included some additional detail in the way that I would want to see if it were that kind of question. So to start with, the whole point of a standard solution is that you know precisely what the concentration is, and therefore you need to know precisely how much of the compound you've added to that solution. So our first step is to accurately weigh out a dry sample of this compound. And when we say accurately weigh it out, that means using a high precision balance, or you could just say a balance that can read out to at least two decimal places. That would mean the same thing. Once we have that weighed out, we're going to transfer it to a beaker. And then you're going to take your weighing boat or your weighing bottle and you're going to weigh it again. And the reason for doing that is that there's probably going to be some residue left on that weighing boat or that weighing bottle. And that's not going to end up in your standard solution. So when you're working out what the concentration is, it's important that you don't just take the mass that you tried to measure out on your balance. You actually take the mass that was transferred. The alternative is that you could rinse out your weighing boat or your weighing bottle and transfer the washings into the beaker. Now, personally, I tend not to go for that method for the very simple reason that when you're talking about the energetics required practical, we often go for enthalpy of solution for a practical to do that one with. And if you're doing that, you can't use this rinsing method. So I tend to take the attitude that if I always teach students to weigh before and weigh afterwards, they can do that in any situation with any practical and it's always right. And then you don't have to think under pressure in the exam or oh, which one am I supposed to be doing? So we've now got our sample in a beaker and we need to start dissolving it. So we're going to dissolve it in a very small volume because we don't want to risk having a greater volume than will fit in our volumetric flask. Um, and it's going to be dissolved in distilled water because, of course, this is an aqueous standard solution. So it needs to be in water. And we're going to use a glass stirring rod to help it to dissolve. Then we're going to transfer that to a volumetric flask. Now, it's important that you know this word volumetric. Obviously, it's important that you can name all of your equipment. But when this question came up in 2016, you couldn't get into level three if you hadn't talked about a volumetric flask. So remember that word. And we're also going to make sure that we rinse all the equipment, so the glass stirring rod and the beaker and a funnel if you used it, and all of the rinsings go into that volumetric flask. So every last little bit of this compound that you've weighed out ends up inside that volumetric flask being part of the standard solution. So we're going to transfer all of those rinsings into the flask as well. Now we're going to add deionized water or distilled water up to the calibration line. So that line that represents this is where exactly 250 centimeters cubed or whatever the volume of that volumetric flask is. And when you're doing that, at the very end, you want to be using a dropping pipette because you don't want to overshoot. Once you've added some extra liquid, you can't take it back out again. You just have to start from the beginning. 
So we're definitely using a pipette at the end. And of course, whenever you're measuring the volume of anything, you want to hold it up to eye level and you want to be measuring from the meniscus. So make sure that you've got that at eye level so that you're accurately measuring there. And then finally, we're going to put a stopper onto the volumetric flask and we're going to invert it, or in other words, turn it upside down and back again 10 times. Now, it's important in order to get this mark that this is happening right at the end, because the reason that we're doing this is um, to homogenise the solution, to make sure that the concentration of the solution is the same all the way through it. Um, and so if you've mentioned um, inverting the flask earlier when we're just talking about dissolving things um, or before we finished adding all of the, the water, that will help it to dissolve, but it won't do this homogenising. You could just end up with a very concentrated solution at the bottom and then some distilled water sat on top of it that has a much lower concentration um, and that wouldn't fulfil the requirements of this practical. So make sure that your inversion step is happening right at the end. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you're now feeling a little bit clearer on how to describe required practical 1A. If you did find this useful don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll be back with more A-level chemistry videos soon.